Chapter 1 A Ride Through the Sky Dorothy lived with her Uncle Henry and Aunt Em on a small farm in Kansas. The house had only one room, which they used for everything. There was a cellar under the house. It was a cyclone shelter. Every year in Kansas, there were cyclones, which were great winds that went round and round in circles. They did a lot of damage, and people sometimes died in these winds. There were empty fields on all sides of the house. There were no trees or houses, and the earth was baked dry by the sun. Life was very hard on the farm. Uncle Henry and Aunt Em were not old, but they looked old because the sun and wind made their skin dry. The hard work took away their happiness, and they never laughed or even smiled. Dorothy did not often laugh either. Sometimes, though, her little dog Toto made her laugh. She often played with him, and she loved him very much. On this day, she was not playing with him, however. Instead, she was standing at the door of the house, looking at the sky. It was very dark, and there was a whistling sound in the air. Uncle Henry said, There's a cyclone coming. I'll put the animals in the shed. He ran out of the house to the shed. Aunt Em came to the door and looked at the sky. Quickly, Dorothy, she shouted. Go to the cellar. Aunt Em ran to the door of the cellar and opened it. Dorothy picked up Toto and ran to the cellar door. Before she could climb down the ladder into the cellar, a great wind picked up the house. It turned it round and round and round and then carried it high into the sky. It was not very dark. Dorothy felt as if she were riding through the sky. She held on to Toto and crawled under her bed, where she stayed for several hours. Then, although the house was still moving, she fell asleep. When she woke up, she did not know how much later the house was on the ground. It was in a field full of flowers, and there were hundreds of beautifully colored birds flying about and singing. Not far away, there was a stream with clear, fresh water. Dorothy was still under her bed. She got up and left the house. She was surprised to see three little men and a little woman walking toward her. They were very strangely dressed. The men's clothes were blue, as were their hats, but the woman's clothes were white and had little stars all over them. When they saw Dorothy, they walked up to her and bowed. Welcome to the land of the munchkins, one of the little men said. We thank you for killing the wicked witch of the East. Now our people are free. I'm afraid you are making a mistake, Dorothy said. I didn't kill any witch. Your house did, one of the little men said. Look. He pointed to the house. Dorothy saw two feet sticking out from under it. Oh, Dorothy exclaimed. The house fell on her. What can I do? There is nothing to do, the little woman said. The Wicked Witch of the East is dead, and the munchkins are grateful to you. Are you a munchkin? Dorothy asked. No, but I am their friend, the little woman said. I am the Witch of the North. Oh, exclaimed Dorothy. Are you a real witch? Yes, but I am not like the Wicked Witch of the East. I am a good witch, and the people love me. I am not as powerful as the Wicked Witch, though. That is why I couldn't set the munchkins free. I thought all witches were wicked, Dorothy said. Oh, no. In the Land of Oz, there are four witches. Two of them are good, and they live in the North and South. Two of them are bad, and they live in the east and west. Now there is only one bad witch left. She lives in the west. But tell me, do you have witches and wizards where you come from? We used to have them, I think, Dorothy said. But we don't have them now. We have them because we are a long way from anywhere, the little woman said. We are not very civilized. I see. Dorothy said. Tell me about the wizards. Oz himself is the great wizard. He is the most powerful wizard, and he lives in the city of emeralds. 
Dorothy wanted to ask more questions, but the little woman suddenly pointed to the witch's feet under the house. Look, she said with a laugh, they're dried up. She took off the witch's silver shoes. You can have these, she said. There is some kind of magic in them, but I don't know what it is. Dorothy took the shoes and went into the house. She put the shoes on the table and then came outside again. She said, I'd like to go back to my home in Kansas. Do you know how to get there? The little people looked at one another and shook their heads. To the east and the south, one of the little men said, there is only desert, and the south is the land of the quadlings. I think it's the same in the west. Another of the little men said. And that's where a wicked witch lives. The north is our home, the little woman said. You must live with us. But I don't want to, Dorothy objected. I want to go home. She started to cry. The little people looked at one another. Then the woman said, The best thing for you to do is go to the city of emeralds. The great wizard is a good man, and perhaps he will help you. But how do I get there? Dorothy asked. You must follow the yellow brick road. It's a long walk, but you'll be all right, the little woman said. She gave Dorothy a kiss and then disappeared. Chapter 2 The Journey Begins Dorothy went back into the house and looked for something to eat. She was hungry, and so was Toto. She ate some bread and butter and then went down to the stream for some water to drink. Then she changed into a blue and white dress and put a bonnet on her head. She looked at her feet. She was wearing old leather shoes. They weren't very comfortable, so she tried on the witch's silver shoes. They fitted her perfectly. Then she put some bread in a basket and said to Toto, Now we're ready for our journey to the city of emeralds. She left the house and started walking. Soon she came to the yellow brick road. As she walked along, people came out of their farmhouses and bowed to her. They knew she was the girl who killed the wicked witch of the east. Toward evening, she came to a house that was bigger than all the others. Men and women were dancing on the grass in front of it. Five men were playing violins. There were tables full of food. A man came up to her. Welcome, he said. My name is Buck. I am a munchkin. You are a good witch. I'm not a witch, Dorothy said. I'm just a girl. But you are wearing white, Buck said. Good witches wear white. My dress is blue and white, Dorothy said. And that is why we know you are our friend. Blue is the favorite color of the munchkins. Dorothy had no answer to this, so she said, I am very tired. May I rest here? Of course, Bach said, and took her to a bedroom. Dorothy fell asleep immediately. In the morning, Bach gave her a good breakfast and said, How can we help you? You can tell me how to get to the City of Emeralds. Dorothy said. I don't know, Bach said. None of us ever goes there. I do know, though, that the road is long and dangerous. I have to see the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy explained. Only he can tell me how to get home to Kansas. She left Bach and his friends and continued on her journey. She soon came to a cornfield. There was a scarecrow in it. It was on a pole. Its head was a bag full of straw. It had eyes, ears, a nose, and a mouth painted on it. Its clothes were very old and blue in color. As she looked at it, one of its eyes closed and then opened again. The scarecrow winked at me, Dorothy thought. Then the scarecrow nodded its head at her in a friendly way. She went into the field and walked up to it. Good day, the scarecrow said. Did you speak? Dorothy asked. I did. And how are you today? I'm very well, thank you, Dorothy said. And you? I don't like it on this pole, the scarecrow said. Can you lift me down? I'll try, Dorothy said. 
She lifted the scarecrow up and pulled him off the pole. Then she said, Can you tell me the way to the City of Emeralds? I can't tell you anything, the scarecrow said. I don't know anything. My head is full of straw. I don't have any brains. I feel sorry for you, Dorothy told him. If you'll come with me to the Wizard of Oz, I'll ask him to help you. Perhaps he can give you some brains. I'll come with you, the scarecrow said. And I'll carry your basket for you. Thank you, Dorothy said. There's one thing I'm afraid of, the scarecrow said. And I want you to know it. I am afraid of fire, so please don't use matches anywhere near me. I won't. Dorothy said, and she continued her journey, accompanied by the scarecrow. They walked all day, and by nightfall, they were both tired. The scarecrow said, I can see a cottage through the trees. Let's go and ask if we can stay the night. There was no one in the cottage, so Dorothy, Toto, and the scarecrow lay down on a bed of leaves and were soon asleep. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto had some bread for breakfast. Then they continued their journey. Before long, they saw a man standing in front of a tree. He had an axe beside him, but he was not moving. He was made wholly of tin. Toto barked and tried to bite the tin man's legs, but the metal hurt his teeth. The tin woodman groaned. Did you groan? Dorothy asked him. Yes, I did, the tin woodman replied. What is the matter? Dorothy asked him. I'm made of metal, the tin woodman said. My joints are rusty. I cannot move my arms and legs. Can I help you? Dorothy asked. Yes, run back to the cottage where you stayed the night. You'll find an oil can there. Bring it here and oil my joints. Dorothy did as the tin woodman asked, and soon she was putting oil in the joints of his arms, legs, and neck. That's better. The tin woodman said, "Now I can move. Thank you very much. May I ask where you are going? We are going to visit the Wizard of Oz in the City of Emeralds." Dorothy said, "If he is a real wizard, perhaps he can give me a heart." The tin woodman said, "Perhaps he can." Dorothy replied, "We're hoping he can give Scarecrow brains. But tell me, why are you made of tin?" It's a long story," the Tin Woodman said. "But the Wicked Witch of the East is to blame. She put a spell on me to please an old woman whose daughter I wanted to marry. The old woman didn't want her daughter to marry. She wanted her to stay at home and look after her. How did she put a spell on you?" Dorothy asked. "She kept making my axe slip when I was cutting wood." I cut my legs and had to have tin ones. I cut my arms and had to have tin ones. Then my axe slipped again and cut my body in half, and I had to have a tin one. Sadly, I also lost my heart. Now I cannot love anybody. I'd rather have brains than a heart, the scarecrow said. A fool would not know what to do with a heart if he had one. Well, I'd rather have a heart than brains," the Tin Woodman said. "Brains don't make you happy. Having a heart does." I don't know which of you is right," Dorothy said to the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman. "But let's all continue walking to the City of Emeralds, and I hope we can find something to eat. You probably don't eat, but Toto and I must have food, and my basket is now empty." Chapter Three: Ditches in the Road. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, and the Tin Woodman continued on their way to the City of Emeralds. Soon they came to a dark forest. Dorothy heard a strange sound and asked, "What was that?" "Well, I don't know," the Tin Woodman said. "This part of the world is new to me." "The Witch of the North told me it was a dangerous journey," Dorothy said. Don't be afraid," the Tin Woodman said. "As long as I have my oil can, nothing can hurt me, and nothing can hurt Scarecrow." "But what about me?" Dorothy asked. 
Did the witch kiss you? Asked the tin woodman. Yes, on my forehead. Then nothing can hurt you, he said. But what about Toto? The witch didn't kiss him, Dorothy said. True, the tin woodman said. Then we must protect him ourselves. Even as he spoke, there was a great roar, and a lion ran out of the trees and with one great paw knocked over the scarecrow. Then he struck the tin woodman, but his paw did not make a mark on the tin. Seeing Toto, he opened his mouth to bite the little dog. Toto was very afraid and began to bark. Dorothy quickly picked him up. Don't you dare hurt my little Toto! She shouted at the lion and hit him on the nose. Ouch! The lion complained. Why did you do that? I didn't bite your dog. You were going to, Dorothy scolded him. You're just a big coward. The lion looked down. I know I am, he said sadly. But I can't help being a coward. Why are you a coward? Dorothy asked the lion. I don't know, he replied. It's a mystery. I'm supposed to be king of the beasts, and all the other animals expect me to be brave. But you're not, Dorothy said. All you can do is frighten little dogs that are smaller than you are. I know, and I'm sorry. I'm not brave at all, the lion said. Perhaps you're a coward because you have no heart, the tin woodman said. Or perhaps it's because you have no brains, the scarecrow said. We're going to the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy explained, because we want his help. I need to know the way home to Kansas. Scarecrow needs some brains, and Tin Woodman needs a heart. Do you think, the lion asked, the wizard could give me courage? It's possible, Dorothy said. Then may I come with you? the lion asked. Dorothy looked at the scarecrow and the tin woodman. They both nodded their heads. Very well, she said. You'll be most welcome. And with these words, she set off again with the lion walking by her side. They walked on until nightfall. Then they camped under a tree. The lion went off to find something to eat. The scarecrow and the tin woodman did not need to eat. Dorothy found some nuts. They all slept well during the night, and the next morning continued their journey. Before long, they came to a great ditch in the road. The sides were so steep that they could not climb down. What can we do? the scarecrow said. Well, I don't know, the tin woodman said. Neither do I, Dorothy said. Oh dear, I hope we can find a way to cross this ditch. I might be able to jump across it, the lion said. And leave us behind? Dorothy objected. That's no help. Perhaps, the lion said. I could jump across with you on my back, one at a time, of course. That's a good idea, Dorothy said. I'll go first, the scarecrow said. I'm only made of straw. If I fall off, I won't get hurt. He jumped on the lion's back. The lion sprang into the air and easily crossed the ditch to the other side. Then he came back for the tin woodman and finally for Dorothy and Toto. As soon as they were all safely across the ditch, they continued their journey. We're now in the land of the Kalidas, the lion told Dorothy. They are huge beasts with bodies like bears and heads like tigers. I'm afraid of them. I'm not surprised, Dorothy said. I'm sure we all are, especially little Toto. And now, in front of them, was another ditch. I can't jump across that, the lion said. It's much too wide. Well, I can make a bridge, the tin woodman said. There was a tall tree nearby, and the tin woodman began to chop it down with his axe. As he chopped, they heard a noise coming from the forest. It's the Kalidas, the lion exclaimed. Hurry, Tin Woodman, hurry before they come and eat us. The Tin Woodman chopped as hard as he could, and suddenly the tree fell across the ditch. The travelers ran across it just in time. The Kalidas were about to cross the bridge, so the Tin Woodman began chopping again. Soon the tree fell away from the side of the ditch. We're safe from the Kalidas, 
Dorothy said. But I wonder what the next danger will be. Chapter 4 A River and Fields of Flowers Dorothy and her friends were anxious to get out of the forest as soon as they could, so they hurried along the yellow brick road. It was not long before they came to a wide river. What can we do now? Dorothy exclaimed. There isn't a tree tall enough to fall across this river. There is no problem, the scarecrow said. Tin Woodman will use his axe to build a raft. And this is what the Tin Woodman did. And while he was busy making the raft, Dorothy found some wild fruit and nuts, which she ate hungrily. Then, because it was taking the Tin Woodman a long time to finish the raft, Dorothy lay down and went to sleep. The night passed without any problems, and the next morning the raft was ready. Dorothy sat in the middle with Toto. The lion stood at one end and nearly sank it because he was so big and heavy. The scarecrow and the tin woodman stood at the other end. They both had long poles they used to push the raft through the water. At first all went well, but then the river became so deep that the poles could not touch the bottom. The tin woodman said, If we cannot stay near the land and the yellow brick road, the wicked witch of the west will use her magic and put a spell on us. And then we won't meet the wizard and I won't get any brains, the scarecrow said. And I won't get a heart, the tin woodman said. And I won't get any courage, the lion said. And I'll never get home to Kansas, Dorothy said. We must do something. The scarecrow was able to push the raft to the river bank. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin woodman got off. Before the scarecrow could get off, however, the raft moved away from the river bank and carried the scarecrow down the river. Dorothy said, Perhaps we'll meet the raft further down the river. The important thing now is to get back to the yellow brick road and continue on our way to the city of emeralds. The lion and the tin woodman agreed, and they set off along the river bank. It was not long before they saw the scarecrow. He was holding on to the pole in the middle of the river. There was no sign of the raft. How can we save him? Dorothy asked. The lion and the tin woodman shook their heads. Then a stork flew up and said, Who are you, and where are you going? Dorothy introduced herself and her friends, and then said, our friend Scarecrow is stuck on that pole in the middle of the river, and we don't know how to rescue him. Can you help? He's much too heavy for me to lift and carry, Stork said. Even though I am a big bird. Oh, he's not heavy at all, Dorothy said. He's stuffed with straw. I'll see what I can do, Stork said. He flew toward the Scarecrow and easily lifted him off the pole. Then he flew with him back to the river bank. The scarecrow was very grateful. If I ever get some brains, he said, I'll try to do something for you in return. That's all right, Stork said. But now I must go. I have babies to look after. With these words, he spread his wings and flew away. The Scarecrow was very happy to be with his friends again, so he hugged them all, even Toto and the Lion. Then they set off once more to find the yellow brick road. They soon came to a field full of many different beautiful flowers, but soon the only plants in the field were bright red poppies. They had a strong scent, which Dorothy breathed in. It quickly made her feel very sleepy. I must lie down and rest, she said. No, the tin woodman said. If you do that, you will die. These poppies are deadly. You must keep on walking. Dorothy was so sleepy that she could not walk without help, so the scarecrow and the tin woodman carried her. Then the lion began to feel sleepy. Run, lion, run, the tin woodman said. Get out of the poppy field before you fall asleep. You will be too heavy for us to carry. The lion did as the tin woodman asked and was soon out of sight. The tin woodman put Toto on Dorothy's lap. The little dog was already asleep.
Then they made a chair with their arms and carried Dorothy out of the poppy field. Sadly, they came across the lion at the edge of the field. He was in a deep sleep. There is nothing we can do to help lion, the tin woodman said. Let us hope that in his sleep he dreams that he has found courage. Chapter 5 The City of Emeralds When the lion woke up and saw that he was alone, he was very frightened. I must find Dorothy and the others, he thought, and he ran as fast as he could until he came to the yellow brick road again. Then he saw them in the distance. He ran up to them and said, Oh, I'm so glad I found you. I was frightened on my own. You're just in time, Dorothy told him. We are nearly at the City of Emeralds. And a few minutes later, they turned a corner, and there in front of them were the gates to the city. A little man, no taller than a munchkin, came forward to meet them. Unlike the munchkins, however, his clothes were green, not blue. What do you want? he demanded. We want to see the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy told him. The wizard is powerful and terrible, the little man said. If he does not like what you say to him, he will be very angry. He'll destroy you. What we have to say is very important, Dorothy said. We believe the wizard is a good wizard, not a bad one. Oh, he is, and he rules this city wisely and well, but he is very angry if people are dishonest. But come with me. I am the guardian of the gates, and it is my job to take visitors to the wizard. First, though, you must put on spectacles. If you do not, the brightness of the city of emeralds will blind you. He opened the door of a small room. Dorothy was surprised to see that it was full of spectacles of all shapes and sizes. Only the color of the glass in them was the same, green. Dorothy, her friends, and the guardian of the gates all put on spectacles. Then the guardian took a golden key out of his pocket and opened the gates of the city. They all went inside. There were many people in the city, all dressed in green. They looked at Dorothy and her friends suspiciously, and the children hid behind their mother's skirts when they saw the lion. The guardian of the gates led the way through the city to the Palace of Oz. There was a soldier, all dressed in green, on guard outside the palace door. These strangers demand to see the great Oz, the guardian said. Enter, and wait while I ask the great Oz if he will see you, the soldier said. He opened the palace door and led the way into a room that had green walls, a green carpet, and even green furniture. Wait here, the soldier said, and went away. After some time, he returned. The great Oz will see you one at a time, and only one of you each day, he said. You may stay in the palace while you wait your turn. The soldier blew on a whistle, and a young girl appeared. She had lovely green hair and green eyes. This girl will show each of you to your rooms, he said. Come with me, the girl said to Dorothy. You others wait here. I will come back for you. She led Dorothy through the palace, up and down stairs, along corridors, until they came to a room. It was the prettiest little room in the world, full of flowers, and it even had a fountain in the middle. Near the window, there was a shelf full of little green books. Make yourself at home, the girl said, and pointing to a bell, she added, And just ring that bell if you want anything. The Great Oz will see you tomorrow. Dorothy was tired, so she lay down on the green bed and was soon asleep. She slept until the next morning when there was a knock on the door and the girl entered. The Great Oz will see you now, she said. Come with me. Dorothy followed the girl to the throne room. She expected to see a man dressed in royal robes, but instead there was just a huge head on a chair. As she stared at it, its mouth moved, and Dorothy heard a voice say, I am Oz the Great and Terrible. Who are you, and what do you want? Dorothy took courage and said, I am Dorothy the Small and Frightened. I have come for your help. 
Where did you get those silver shoes? The voice demanded. I got them from the Wicked Witch of the East, Dorothy said. My house fell on her and killed her. Where did you get that mark on your forehead? The Great Oz demanded next. The Witch of the North kissed me there, Dorothy said. The Great Oz was silent for a moment. Then he said, What do you want me to do? Please, tell me how I can get back to my home in Kansas, Dorothy said. I will tell you if you will do something for me, the Great Oz said. I will if I can, Dorothy told him. What do you want me to do? Kill the Wicked Witch of the West, answered Oz. Oh, I couldn't do that. I don't want to kill anything. You killed the Wicked Witch of the East, Oz told her. That was an accident, Dorothy said. I didn't mean to kill her. You know what you must do, Oz said. No more arguments. Kill the Wicked Witch or you will never see your home in Kansas again. Chapter 6 The Wicked Witch of the West Dorothy left the throne room and told her friends about the wizard. He'll help me get back to Kansas, she said. Only if I kill the Wicked Witch of the West. What must we do, the Tin Woodman said, before he will help us? Go and ask him, Dorothy said. I'll wait for you here. One at a time, the Tin Woodman, the Scarecrow, and the Lion asked the Great Wizard to help them. The Tin Woodman wanted a heart, the Scarecrow wanted some brains, and the Lion wanted courage. The Great Wizard said the same thing to each of them. I will help you only if you help Dorothy kill the Wicked Witch of the West. And so it was that Dorothy and her friends, and Toto of course, set off to find the Wicked Witch of the West. Dorothy spoke to the guardian of the gates. Can you tell me, please, she asked politely, which road leads to the Wicked Witch of the West? There is no road, the guardian said. No one ever wants to go that way. The best you can do is to keep walking to the west, where the sun sets. But be careful. She will try to make slaves of you. Dorothy and her friends walked all day. The sun was hot, and by late afternoon they were all so tired that they lay down in the grass and slept. They were not far from the castle of the Wicked Witch of the West. She had only one eye, but it was as powerful as a telescope. As she sat at the door of her castle, she could see Dorothy and her friends asleep in the grass. She was very angry to find them in her country. She blew on a whistle, and fierce wolves immediately raced toward her. Go to those people asleep in the grass, she ordered them. Tear them to pieces! The wolves raced off to obey her. Luckily, the tin woodman was awake and saw them coming. Oh, I'll fight the wolves, he said. Get behind me! There were forty wolves, but one by one, the tin woodman killed them with his axe. When the Wicked Witch of the West saw her wolves lying dead, she was even angrier than before. This time she blew her whistle twice. A huge flock of crows flew toward her. Fly at once to these strangers, she ordered them, and peck them to pieces. The Scarecrow saw them coming. Leave this to me, he said. I'll deal with these crows. And this is what he did. One by one, he killed the crows until they all lay dead at his feet. When the Wicked Witch of the West saw her crows lying dead, she was even angrier than before. Three times she blew her whistle. Immediately, a giant swarm of bees flew up to her. Fly at once to those strangers, she ordered them, and sting them to death. The Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman saw the bees coming. Take my straw and cover Dorothy, Toto, and the lion with it, the Scarecrow said. These bees can't hurt us. I'm made of straw, and you are made of tin. The bees stung the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman, but did not hurt them. The bees all died, however, because a bee dies when it uses its sting.
Next, the Wicked Witch of the West ordered her slaves, the Winkies, to attack the strangers. They did so, but the lion gave a great roar and frightened them so much that they all ran away. The Wicked Witch of the West had one final weapon. She went to a cupboard in her castle and took out a golden cap. It was covered with jewels. Whoever owned it could make the winged monkeys obey them, but no one could call them more than three times. The Wicked Witch of the West had only one call left. She decided to use her last call to destroy Dorothy and her friends. She stood on her left foot and said slowly, Ep, pe, pep, pe, kake. Then she stood on her right foot and said slowly, Hello, holo, hello. Then she stood on both feet and shouted, Zizi, Zuzi, Zik! The sky darkened, and suddenly the wicked witch of the West was surrounded by flying monkeys. The biggest of them, who was king of the monkeys, said, You called us. This was your last call. What do you want us to do? Kill all the strangers except the lion. Bring him to me. I will use him instead of a horse to pull my coach. The monkeys flew toward Dorothy and her friends. Some of them picked up the tin woodman and then dropped him onto rocks. He was so bent that he could not move. Some pulled all the straw out of the scarecrow's head and body until his clothes were completely empty. The others tied up the lion with rope and carried him away. Dorothy was frightened. I'll be next, she thought, but the monkeys did not hurt her. She has the kiss of the good witch on her forehead, the king of the monkeys told the others. Carry her gently to the wicked witch of the west castle. When the wicked witch of the west saw Dorothy, she was afraid. Not only does she have the kiss mark on her forehead, she thought, she is also wearing the magic silver shoes, but she probably doesn't know how powerful they are. I will make her my slave. Come with me, she said, and do as I tell you. If you do not, I shall do to you what I did to the tin woodman and scarecrow. She made Dorothy cook and clean, cut wood for the fire, and do all the work in the castle. While Dorothy worked, the Wicked Witch of the West tried to make the lion pull her coach, but he roared at her. So she said, If you do not do what I say, I shall not give you any food and you will die. The lion said nothing, but he refused to pull the coach. He did not die, though, because Dorothy brought him food every night. Dorothy had to work long hours, and she was very sad. Even Toto was sad because he saw Dorothy crying. As for the Wicked Witch, she planned to take the silver shoes from Dorothy's feet. The problem was that she was afraid of the dark, so would not go into Dorothy's room at night. She was also afraid of water, so would never go near Dorothy when she was washing. One day, however, she had a plan. She put a piece of metal in the middle of the room. Then, using magic, she made the piece of metal invisible. When Dorothy came into the room, she did not see the piece of metal and fell over it. The Wicked Witch immediately ran up and pulled off one of the shoes. Dorothy was very angry. Give me back my shoe! She shouted at the Wicked Witch. Never! The Wicked Witch said. And now I have half your power! Dorothy was so angry that she picked up a bucket of water that was in the room and threw it over the Wicked Witch. The Wicked Witch screamed. Do you know what you have done? She cried. Now I shall melt! I shall die! And before Dorothy's eyes, the Wicked Witch began to melt, and soon there was nothing left of her except a pool on the floor. Chapter 7 A Return to the Wizard The Wicked Witch of the West was now dead, and Dorothy was able to tell the Winkies that they were free. The Lion, who was with Dorothy, said, I wish Scarecrow and Tin Woodman were with us. So do I, Dorothy said. They are locked up somewhere in the castle. We must find them and rescue them. 
She asked the Winkies to help her, and they soon found the Tin Woodman. Sadly, he could not move. His body was full of dents. Are any of you tinsmiths? Dorothy asked the Winkies. Several of them put up their hands. Excellent, Dorothy said. I'm sure you can straighten out the dents in Tin Woodman and get his arms and legs moving again. The Winky Tinsmith set to work, banging and polishing. Soon, the Tin Woodman was able to stand up and move about again. Now we must find Scarecrow, Dorothy said. He was not in the castle, so they searched outside. At last they found him. He was caught in the branches of a tree. It's too tall for us to climb, the Winky said. Don't worry, the Tin Woodman said. I'll chop the tree down with my axe. And this is what he did. The tree fell with a crash, and the scarecrow's clothes fell out of the branches. Dorothy took them back to the castle, where there was plenty of clean straw, and quickly filled the clothes with it. The scarecrow was whole again. Now that we are all together again, Dorothy said, we must go back to the Wizard of Oz and make him keep his promise. Oh, good, exclaimed the Tin Woodman. Oh, I shall get a heart. Then I shall get some brains, said the Scarecrow. Then I shall get some courage, said the Lion. And I will know the way home to Kansas, said Dorothy. Before you set off for the City of Emeralds and the Palace of the Great Oz, the leader of the Winkies said, we want you to have some presents. They gave Dorothy and her friends all kinds of beautiful things. Dorothy got a golden cap. She put it on, and it fitted her perfectly. Then they left the castle. Soon, however, they were completely lost. I don't know which way to go, Dorothy said, and it is getting very late. Let's rest for a little while. She took off the golden cap. As she did so, she saw some writing inside it. I wonder what this is, she said. And she read it aloud, standing on her left foot as she did so. Epe-pe-pe-ka-ke. Then she stood on her right foot and read slowly, Hilo, holo, hello. Then she stood on both feet and shouted, Sizzy, Suzy, Zick! Immediately, the winged monkeys arrived. What can we do for you? The king of the monkeys asked. Show us the way to the city of emeralds, Dorothy said. We have to talk to the great Oz. We can do better than that, the king of the monkeys said. We can take you there. The winged monkeys picked up Dorothy and her friends and carried them to the gates of the city of emeralds. The guardian of the gates met them as before. Back again? he exclaimed in surprise. Didn't the Wicked Witch of the West kill you? Does it look like it? Dorothy said. If you must know, I threw a bucket of water on her, and she melted. Then I will take you to see the Great Oz. Come this way, he said. He took them to a room full of spectacles as before, and they all had to put on a pair. Then he sent a message to the Great Oz that Dorothy and her friends wished to see him. They thought that he would see them immediately, but he did not. He kept them waiting and waiting and waiting. At last, the Scarecrow said to the Guardian of the Gates, This is not good enough. Dorothy kept her promise to the Great Oz. She killed the Wicked Witch of the West. Now he must keep his promise to us. Tell him that if he does not, we shall ask the winged monkeys to do something about it. The guardian of the gates gave the great Oz this message. He was so frightened that he sent for Dorothy and her friends without more delay. To their surprise, they did not see a huge head on a chair. Instead, they saw a very small, ordinary man. Who are you? Dorothy demanded. We want to see the wizard. The small man coughed and said, <clears throat> yes, well, you see, <clears throat> the thing is, that is to say, well, I I'm the wizard. You? exclaimed Dorothy. It's a long story, the little man said. Sit down, and I'll tell it to you. Dorothy and her friends sat down, and the little man began his story.
I come from Omaha, he said. That's not far from Kansas, as you know, Dorothy. I can't do magic, but I can make all kinds of animals and bird noises and make them sound as if they are coming from another place. You're a ventriloquist, Dorothy said. Exactly. So I was able to make monsters and pretend that they were alive and could speak. This way, everyone here thinks I am a powerful wizard who can take on the shape of any animal or monster. How did you get here? Dorothy asked him. I fell out of a balloon, Oz said. Everyone here thought I was a wizard and obeyed me. My only problem was the wicked witches. I knew they would see that I was a fake. And that is why you asked me to kill the wicked witch of the West? Dorothy said. Yes. And that means that you don't have magic powers? I'm afraid so, Oz said. That means you can't give me a heart, the Tin Woodman said. Or me some brains, the Scarecrow said. Or me some courage, the Lion said. And I suppose you don't know the way home to Kansas, or even Omaha, Dorothy said. I think you are a very bad man. Chapter Eight, Take Me Home. Oz looked very sad when Dorothy said he was a bad man. I'm a bad wizard, he said. But I'm not really a bad man. But I must have some brains, the Scarecrow said. You already have brains, Oz said. You are learning new things every day. A baby has brains, but it doesn't know much. Experience is what you need, and then your brains will work very well. That may be true, the Scarecrow said. But my head feels empty. Then come to me tomorrow morning, and I'll put some brains into your head, Oz said. But you must learn how to use them. I can't teach you that. What about my courage? The lion demanded. If you are going to give Scarecrow brains, you should give me courage. I am sure you already have plenty of courage. What you don't have is confidence. Everyone is frightened of danger. You are no different from anyone else that way. Then you must give me the kind of courage that helps me to forget that I am always so afraid. The lion said. Very well. Come and see me tomorrow morning, and I'll give you that kind of courage. Oz said. Now it was the Tin Woodman's turn to complain. What about my heart? He asked. When do I get one? I suppose I ought to give you one, Oz said. But I don't think it will make you any happier. And now, Dorothy said, it's my turn. How do I get home to Kansas? I'll have to think about that, probably for several days, Oz said. While I'm thinking, please be my guests in the castle, and please, please don't tell anyone that you know I am not a real wizard. The next morning, Oz filled the scarecrow's head with bran and asked him if he could feel his brains. Oh yes, the scarecrow said. I feel quite clever now. Then Oz cut a hole in the Tin Woodman's chest and put a heart made of silk inside. The Tin Woodman said, "Oh, thank you! I could feel my heart inside me." Then Oz gave the lion something to drink. When this is inside you, he said, "You will feel full of courage." The lion drank and immediately felt less afraid of everything and everyone. When Dorothy came to him to find out how to get home to Kansas, Oz said, "I'm sorry, Dorothy, but I don't know the way." I need help myself to get home to Omaha. But you help my friends, Dorothy said. Yes, but it was easy to give them what they thought they wanted. Oz explained. They believed I could do it, but you know I'm not a real wizard. What am I going to do? Dorothy asked tearfully. I'll make a balloon of silk. I have plenty of that. We'll fill it with hot air and float away from the castle. Perhaps we'll then find our way home. A few days later, the balloon was ready. 
It had a large basket hanging down from it. A fire was burning in the basket, and it made the air in the balloon hot. Hot air rises, and the balloon tried to rise, but a rope stopped it from floating away. Oz got into the basket. Hurry, Dorothy, he said. Get in quickly. The rope is not very strong. Dorothy began to get into the basket, but then she remembered Toto. I must get Toto, she said, and climbed out of the basket. As she did so, the rope broke. The balloon rose into the air and was soon high in the sky and out of sight. Oh, what am I going to do now? Let's ask the guardian of the gates, the scarecrow said. He seemed to be a helpful kind of man, and he may have some ideas. When Dorothy explained her problem to the guardian of the gates, he said, "There is only one person who can help you, and that is the witch of the south." Is she a good witch? Dorothy wanted to know. The Quadlings think so, the guardian said. And I believe she is very beautiful and knows how to stay young forever. You must take the roads to the south to find her. Without wasting any time, Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion set off to find the Witch of the South. The journey was long and hard, but at last they reached the palace of the Witch of the South. Her name was Glinda, and she was beautiful and looked very young. I will help you to get home, Dorothy," she said. "But I need your golden cap. Of course, you can have it," Dorothy said. "But remember, you can use it only three times." "I only need it three times," Glinda said. "The first time, I shall ask the winged monkeys to take Scarecrow back to the city of emeralds. He will be a wonderful ruler of the city." The second time, I shall ask the winged monkeys to take the Tin Woodman to the lands of the Winkies. He loves them, and they love him. He will be a good ruler of the Winkies. The third time, I shall ask the winged monkeys to take Lion to the jungle, where he will be king of all the beasts. And how will I get home to Kansas? Dorothy asked. All you need to do, Glinda said. Is click the heels of your silver shoes and say, "Take me home." Dorothy did not want to spend any more time away from home, so she thanked Glinda and said goodbye to her friends. Then, holding Toto in her arms, she clicked her heels three times and said, "Take me home." The next moment, she was sitting on the ground outside her home. It was a new house, and her uncle was just finishing building it. Her aunt M was running out of the house to meet her. "I am so happy to see you, darling," she said. "What happened to you?" "Oh," Dorothy said, "nothing much. I just visited the land of Oz." Playlet: The Wizard of Oz. How much longer do we have to wait? The wizard is very busy. He's an important and very powerful wizard. You must be careful not to annoy him. We only need a few minutes of his time. I just want to know the way back to Kansas. I just want to know where I can get a brain. I just want to know where I can get a heart. I just want some courage. What does the dog want? He'd probably like a bone, wouldn't you, Toto? I think the wizard is very rude. He promised to help us. Kill the wicked witch of the west, he said, and I'll help you. That's right. He said he'd give me a brain, and he'd give me a heart, and he'd give me some courage. It's not fair to keep us waiting like this. How did you kill the wicked witch of the west? Perhaps if I tell the wizard how you did it, he'll see you sooner. I poured some water over her, and she melted away. Just like that? Yes, just like that. I was a bit surprised. I suspect she was too. Anyway, be patient. I'll go and ask the wizard when he'll see you. Do you know what I think? No, tell me. I don't think the wizard knows how to help us. You mean he doesn't know how to give me a heart? You don't think he knows how to give me some courage?
He doesn't know the way back to Kansas. That's what I think. He told you he would help us if you killed the Wicked Witch of the West because he thought you couldn't do it. I think you may be right. Oh, dear. What a waste of time. Oh, not really. We had a great adventure. I loved being carried through the air by the winged monkeys. Yes, it was fun. I enjoyed it, too. I didn't. I was scared. Good news. He'll see you all now. It's empty. Where's the huge head? It will probably just appear. He is a wizard, so he can do amazing things. Good morning. Good morning. Is the wizard coming soon? Uh, well, you see, uh, that is. What are you trying to say? Don't be angry with me. Why should I be angry with you? Because, oh dear, this is really embarrassing. I'll be honest with you. Don't tell me the wizard isn't here. Oh, he's here. Oh yes, well, sort of. What are you talking about? Get to the point. Yes, answer Dorothy's question. I don't want to be rude, but perhaps I'll wait outside. No, Lion, stay with us. Now, sir, tell us what happened to the wizard. Very well. I'm the wizard. You? you? Yes, me. That is, I'm not a real wizard. There isn't one. But I spoke to him. His head was on that chair. It wasn't a real head. It was a stuffed head. Like mine? In a way. But the head spoke to me. No, that was me behind the throne. But your voice came from the head. That's what you thought. I threw my voice. How did you throw your voice? I'm a ventriloquist. I used to work as a magician and ventriloquist in Omaha. That's not far from Kansas. I know. I found myself in the city of Emeralds by mistake. I didn't know what to do, so I pretended to be a wizard. How did you make the people here think you were a wizard? By making my voice come from different places. You won't give me away, will you? The people here obey me because they are afraid of me. I think you're a very bad man. Not really. I may be a bad wizard, a useless wizard, but I'm not a bad man. Yes, you are. You lied to us. You promised to tell me the way home to Kansas. You promised to give me a brain. You promised to give me a heart. You promised to make me brave and give me courage. You already have all these things. You, Scarecrow, are very smart. Isn't that right, Dorothy? Yes, he is. I think he's very smart. He always has good ideas. And Tin Woodman has a big heart. He cares about people. He's a very good friend. You're right. He's got a really big heart, and we all love him. What about me? You just need confidence. Courage is all in the mind. When you go back to the jungle, you'll be the king of the beasts. But I don't know how to get back to Kansas. I'm making a huge hot air balloon. We'll get in it and fly away together. Lion can go back to the jungle. Scarecrow can rule this city instead of me. He's clever enough. And Tin Woodman can go back to the forest. It all sounds very good. I just hope you can find the way home. 